Hey guys, Jenna here. Welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of tiny homes and showcase people living alternative lifestyles. In today's video, you're gonna meet one mom who has turned her love for tiny homes into a thriving business. It all started when she purchased one tiny home as a backyard guest cabin and then later decided to move it to an RV park where she rented it out to guests. Using the earnings from that first tiny home, she decided to buy another and then another tiny home. Now with three tiny homes that she's able to rent out to guests, she's able to create passive income for her family. She's gonna take us on a tour of her brand new wagon tiny home and tell us a little bit more about her business strategy. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so that you get a notification every time I post a new video. Hello, my name's Anita. I'm so excited to show you my gypsy wagon, Lavinia. When I got interested in tiny houses, I was already in the real estate business. I was buying residential real estate and renting out long-term rentals. I got to visit the Tiny House Jamboree, it was a big convention some years ago, and I just fell in love with tiny houses. I got so excited about them, they were so fun, and they were so creative, and I never thought about having them as part of my business, really, and it just sort of accidentally fell into that. I bought a tiny house to use as a guest house at my own house, where I live, and I ended up running into trouble with the HOA over that. So I didn't know what to do. I was worried and upset about it, but I said, you know what, let's try this crazy thing. Let me move it over up here to Fairplay where I own some RV lots. Let's put it on a lot and let's see if it could do well as a short-term rental. And I thought I was taking such a big risk and I was so worried about it. And sure enough, I brought it up here and it's just been such a huge success. This has been really amazing that I've been able to fit this into my life and continue growing it and it's something that helps us grow our passive income and is just exciting and, and fun and a real creative outlet and makes me really happy to know that I can create these experiences for guests. The very first tiny house I got was from the Tumbleweed Tiny House Company. It's the Cypress model, it's 20 feet. It has a sort of cottage look, which everyone loves. The way that it's laid out is that downstairs there's a living space, there's a loft upstairs for a sleeping space, and there's a bathroom in the back. The second tiny house I got was also from the Tumbleweed Tiny House Company. It was their Farallon model, and I got a 24-foot long model. There's the loft space upstairs, which has a queen-size bed, and then there's another room in the downstairs. You can use it as an office, or in my case, I put a bedroom in there, so it does have two bedrooms. So that's the biggest tiny house that I have. And right behind us, here we have my Gypsy Wagon Lavinia, which is the smallest. I really wanted to build an experience. It wasn't just a place for someone to come and lay their head after a long day of travel. That experience had to start from the moment you came. And what is the first thing you saw? Of course, the door. So it meant so much to me to pick a beautiful door. From the moment you arrive, you feel like you're entering an experience. All right, let's come on inside. Welcome to the inside of the Gypsy Wagon. You can see that even though it looks so small on the outside, it actually feels so expansive in here. That's because of the slanted walls and because of this beautiful curved roof with the wonderful exposed wood. One of my absolute favorite details here is this lovely damask wallpaper. I myself grew up in the Soviet Union in Russia where every single home had wallpaper and Damask was the most popular one. Seeing this kind of wallpaper makes me think of my childhood so that makes me happy and I hope it makes other people happy too. When you're designing a really fun place like this it's really hard not to get carried away and go way over budget which is exactly what I did. 
So again, it's such a small space. Every little detail matters so much. I couldn't not get beautiful vintage lighting that again adds to the character of the place. I'm trying to transport you to the olden days here. And if you remember in the olden days before cell phones, we used clocks. Here I got a fun vintage one. It ticks, goes back and forth. I thought it'd be a fun thing to add to the character of the place. Here is our gypsy wagon kitchen and you won't believe how much we have been able to fit in here. So we've got our refrigerator, we've got our microwave. Again, I was trying to go for a vintage feel for the whole house. So this is as vintage as I could get, something 50s style. I like it, I think it looks fun. I tried to bring in colorful pottery. One of my favorite things that I bought for this gypsy wagon is this beautiful Moroccan teapot. It's functional, you can boil water in it and it's also such a lovely decorative piece. There's not a lot of room for tchotchkes and decorations, so you really want to make every necessary item in the home as beautiful as it could be. We have a two burner cooktop and a lovely deep copper sink and a coffee maker. We're fully equipped with cookware and plates, so really you have everything you need to comfortably stay here and eat in. So when designing this home, it was really important for me to add the lace curtains. I thought it added a real beautiful sort of gypsy inspired touch. And I thought that the Tiffany lamb gave a beautiful vintage feel. For the seating area, we've got this custom bench and it opens up with storage inside. I knew that when we were gonna get a cushion for the seating area, it was gonna be a big part of the decor. It's a big part of the room, it's a small room. So I absolutely love what I ended up with. I bought this beautiful Moroccan upholstery fabric online. I got the foam and then I went to a custom upholstery shop to create this lovely cushion and I, I think it adds so much to the space. I got these vintage photos on eBay to add to the gypsy character of the place. In Russia, the image of gypsies was always with playing cards. Gypsies always had playing cards. So I, I was so excited to find this beautiful vintage photo of a lady all dressed up with a fan of, of playing cards. And over here is, I think, an image we're all familiar with, a beautiful lady with a big crystal ball. Here we've got yet another beautiful curved door. So let's open it up and take a look inside the bathroom. Can you believe it? We squeezed a whole bathroom in here. So it is a wet bath. You've got a full residential toilet here. You've got a shower. Here we've got this beautiful vintage looking tile and along the whole length of the bathroom, we've got this ledge. So you can sit on it if you're showering and it's a great place to place toiletries, making this tiny little bathroom that much more functional. So here we are entering the bedroom. And as you can see, the beautiful curves of the house continue here. We've got a lovely curved archway doorway going into the bedroom. And in the bedroom, of course, we've got the beautiful curved roof and we've got shelving built into that. So everywhere you look, you've got this lovely wood and these lovely lines. Out of the whole gypsy wagon, this place makes me the happiest. It just feels so wonderful being here. It's so cozy, it's so beautiful, but because we've got windows on both sides, large windows, and this beautiful curved roof, it still feels really airy. I just wanna lie down and lounge in here all day and go to sleep. We've got the beautiful angel lamp behind us. I was so happy that I found that piece. And right here, we've got a wall-mounted TV. So you can sleep here, but you can also lounge here, read, watch a movie, relax, just really get away from it all. So here we are at the side of the gypsy wagon. It is a full 20 feet long, and it's around 10 feet wide over here. So we are at 10,000 feet in a high alpine environment. So one of the most important things up here is skirting this tiny house well. So we've got two inch foam insulation behind here. It's fully skirted with this wood and we have to run heated hoses and hard sewer line and heat tape and heat under there. And we've been doing this for a few years so I think we've got it pretty dialed in to keep things from freezing but it was a big challenge. Because we are in this high alpine environment with really extreme weather in the winter, one of the things I decided to spend the extra money on was these super high-end windows. These are from a company called Alpen out of Boulder, Colorado. They're so well insulated, they're gonna go a long way to making this home really cozy and wind tight in the winter for the guests. So here we are in the back of the gypsy wagon. You can see these slanted walls 
and the curved roof that really give that gypsy character. Here is part of our mini split. All of my tiny homes are heated and cooled with Mitsubishi mini splits. They're so energy efficient and most places up here in the high country do not have air conditioning, but it can get hot in the summer. So guests really appreciate having that air conditioning option. Thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to like, share and subscribe and I will see you soon with another tiny house or alternative lifestyle tour.